Hello all, we'll start in few minutes. Thank you all for joining. Do we have Capgemini team today? I see Broadcom. I'm trying to see if you have anyone from Capgemini yet. I'll wait for another couple of minutes. Hopefully someone from Capgemini will be on to discuss the Mac today. Oh, wait, today is 8.15. This is from Cisco. Sorry about that, Sachin. Do we have anyone from Cisco on the bridge? Sorry, I was in mute. Hey, Anil, can you hear me? This is Mridul. Hey, Mridul. Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, Anil, we've been trying to reach you. Uh, Sachin was not ready for his presentation today. And he, he sent me an email last week to Yanza and Rita and but today he's not going to be able to present. Okay. Oh, let me see. Do you know if I was part of that conversation? I and didn't see. might have forwarded you the email to you. Um, I'm trying to check Shiva. Okay, uh, so you want to remove by two weeks? Yeah, um, yeah, two weeks if that is possible. Otherwise, whenever it's the next available, like after that, we can do. Got it. Yeah, I see someone included me last night. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. We were speaking with Yanza and then we realized later last week that he was uh, uh, his PTO, I think. Right, no, it's okay. Um, let me respond to that. Uh, I'll see what's the next slot available. I think we should have move some of the other ones to today. What, what, what was the topic today? Uh, it was uh, the the voltage and uh, not the voltage actually it's uh, UEFI key management to perform the secure boot. Oh, okay. Is it from Cisco? Or from uh, yes, yeah. yes, it's from Cisco. Yeah. Okay. To share the mechanism to you know rotate keys regularly for the UEFI secure boot enabled systems. Yeah. That was a topic. And uh, looks like they, they asked to two more weeks to to move this. Okay. 
at least because Cisco is not ready to present. Okay. okay. What is what is the next week topic? Next week we have we are RP. Oh, we are RP. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we get confirmation from the uh, the folks that that, that is ready? Yeah, uh, I have confirmation. I think I'll double check with them just to make sure that they they're coming next week. All uh, right. Yeah, yes, we we'll come uh, next week. Mikas, yeah. So you guys ready for the next week for that? Or you want yes. to actually, if you guys are ready, probably I'm not sure if you can do it today. Not today. Okay. Next week, yeah. Okay. All right. So. Hey, hey Anil, uh, this is Sudarshan from NVIDIA. So I have a topic to present on uh, 29th of August, but I'm ready with the topic. The PR has been raised for some time. So if I can use this lot today and maybe we can swap it with uh, what today we have on. 29. Will that work? And what topic is that? It is on auto fake. And Cisco, uh, you guys will be ready for 29th then? I can swap this topic. Um, yeah, I, I, I think we should be ready. Wait, okay. Guhan, Ying, you guys are okay to swap that so that auto fake by solution can be done today? And the and, uh, the secure board yeah. will be moved. Okay, we can do that then. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Darshan. Let's get started with the auto sure. sure, sounds great. Um, uh, let me share the screen. Okay, let me move. Okay, sure, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So uh, I hope you are able to view it. Not yet. Uh, okay, it's coming uh, now? up. Yes, we can see it now. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Sudarshan from NVIDIA. Uh, today, I'm going to present design about the uh, auto fic. So, just to give a brief overview of what fic is, it's the forward error correction. And uh, Sonic supports the following uh, fic settings. So, we have three fic settings, which is, which is none, and then uh, fic mode RS, which is a read Solomon. It is according to IEEE 8.2.3 class uh, 108. And then the fire code fit, which is a uh, class 74. So the reason why we have to introduce this new feature is to bring in a deterministic approach when auto neg and fit is configured. So as we know, auto negotiation is a protocol uh, to exchange the link parameters and one of the parameters is fit. So when you have autoneg enabled and also have a user fit configured, currently the behavior is left to uh, the SI library or the, the uh, platform uh, to determine what will happen, whether the user fit will take precedence or the auto negotiation uh, fit will uh, take effect and user will be ignored, etc. So in order to kind of uh, bring more deterministic behavior, we kind of uh, uh, introduce this concept of auto fit and also have an ability for the user to configure whether the user fit needs to override or uh, we should have uh, the fit auto negotiate. So we are introducing a new uh, fit mode called auto, which is configurable through the CLI. Currently we have three modes apart from it. We will also be able to configure a mode called auto. And these are the requirements. Uh, the first requirement is honor the backward compatibility. So whatever exists today should work as it is. If a uh, user image upgrades an image with uh, the previous uh, changes, it should also work with the current changes uh, with the auto effect feature. Allow the user uh, effect to be uh, auto negotiated and uh, allow the user to uh, set the force set the effect. So the high level design is uh, in order to uh, facilitate the behavior, uh, there is a SI attribute, uh, SI port attribute, uh, uh, auto neg fit mode override. This was introduced a, a year and a half back. Uh, this is uh, introduced inside in order to bring a clear approach to uh, define the behavior when uh, fit can 
uh, auto negotiation are enabled so what this does is when this is set to true uh, even if auto negotiation is enabled the user uh, fic will take precedence however when this set is false what it means is the auto negotiation uh, fic will take precedence when auto negotiation is enabled so we introduce a new mode called auto in the cli so when the uh, what it means when the user uh, fic mode is set to one of the legacy mode none rs or fc when the user configures through cli uh, the override will be set to true uh, which means the user uh, fic will always take the precedence however when the user chooses the mode auto we will set the auto neg uh, override to false and when auto negotiation is enabled uh, the auto negotiated uh, fic will always uh, the fic will be always uh, uh, configured through the auto negotiation so this is uh, a brief uh, idea of what is going to happen when you set the auto so in order to maintain the backward compatibility we will query the mode uh, override and use only when it is supported so this was already existing in the fair and the auto neg fic mode override and recently we introduced one more attribute which is called a uh, port attribute uh, opera fic so the reason for introducing this attribute is when we introduce the uh, mode auto we need to understand what is the operational fic mode and that can be queried through uh, the sai attribute and we don't have one so a few months back we uh, added this new attribute which is called uh, opera fic it's now currently in the sai master and when auto negotiation is enabled and we query it this will return the actual uh, opera uh, operational fic that is uh, uh, on the port so to give a brief understanding of different scenarios sure 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 uh, mm -hmm. oh, okay here's the table okay cool yeah of what all the different uh, uh, possible combinations that we have i illustrated this through a table so let's go over one by one scenario uh, the first scenario is when the override is supported is false that is user has override supported false um it means when the user auto negus uh, true or false and uh, sai fic is none rs or fc we will set the fic mode as such we will not program this auto uh, this is in any way not supported so it will not be set and the behavior is non deterministic because the user has not uh, pro uh, provided support for this second when uh, uh, fic mode is uh, supported Uh, and uh, auto is set no fake attributes will be set so what happens is we will have a check in the cli if the user configures to cli it will throw an error and the third setting is no fake setting and auto neg is en enabled or disabled with override no fake attributes again will be set because nothing is configured hey sudarsh mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh, the first one you said uh, undeterministic it is not under <laughs> It is deterministic, right? Whatever user can gets user configures that that's it, going to get set. It is uh, non-deterministic in the sense when auto is enabled, you will not know what will uh, the behavior. User configures none or else or FC, and auto neg is also enabled, but you will not be aware whether uh, auto negotiation will uh, exchange fic or the user fic will take precedence. That's what I mean by the deter deterministic behavior. Okay. Uh, so this should maybe. But, but, uh, but if the auto negotiation is false, then yeah, that's deterministic. deterministic. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, so this should probably that should be separated out as separate rows, uh, the true or false for true or like, false uh, to bring uh, more clarity. I Probably can do because should, uh, because the settings is going to be the same. I am just in this table. I just illustrate what are the sai attributes that will be set. It's not going to change uh, even if it is true or false. Anyway, we will set the sai attributes as such. Uh, but if it is true, I think that's when you are saying it will be uh, non-deterministic, right? If auto neg is that's true correct. and fake is also set, 
So this what? table, this table doesn't determine the behavioral uh, uh, way. It just determines what psi attribute settings are set. And this document that uh, they will start uh, explains why if the uh, auto neg is enabled and uh yeah. is set maybe to, maybe yeah. i think on, on that point maybe you know if it's true then auto nego the side attribute auto nego will also be true right so yeah so maybe uh, i can update i can update this table not a problem yeah. sure yeah. <laughs> okay now coming to the four five and six which are when override is supported by the vendor side and auto deck is set to true and when the user effect is configured none as none RSFC, what it means is we will uh, set the uh, corresponding psi effect attribute for none RS and FC and also set the alternate uh, override mode to true, which means that user effect will always take precedence. When override is supported, alternate is true and effect mode is auto. It means user wants to uh, have the auto-negotiated fit, which, which means uh, auto-negotiated uh, uh, fit mode override will be set to false. So by default, if this is set and uh, uh, the auto-negotiation will take care of, have, should take care of handling the fit. And when override is set to true and auto neg is set to true, but the user has not configured any fit, uh, we will not set any attribute here and uh, it, de it depends on what the user, uh, the auto negotiation behavior of the platform is. Next, we have auto neg uh, override supported true, but auto neg as false. So the override is true and uh, fake is set to one of uh, the legacy modes. We will set the legacy modes as such and then RS RFC. And uh, for auto neg false and override uh, supported and auto is set, uh, we will not set any uh, fake attributes. And at last, uh, when override supported is true uh, and auto neg is false and uh, fake nothing is set, no fake attribute will be set. So this covers the matrix of uh, different scenarios and I will update for true or false separately. I mean, maybe one thing I didn't quite clear is that mm -hmm. uh, what is actually the uh, config DB, you know, auto neg and the back, the data config DB, right? So override yes. is not in the config DB or not? No, this is query through SI. Okay. Override support is query through SI. And based on it, and uh, from the config DB attributes, what SI attribute will be set? I will update the header to clarify where each setting comes from. This is from Sai. These two are from config. And this is what the Sai attributes that will be set. Hey, uh, Sudarshan, you also mentioned about the backward compatibility, right? Uh, mm -hmm. where, would, where would the backward compatibility issue comes here? I will explain, OK? okay. Um, uh, so... Sudarshan, uh, Babu here. <clears throat> Just uh, yeah. one more uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe the effect value itself uh, mm -hmm. will also be dependent on the length of the cable or even the cable type, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so do you take care of that scenario as part of our effect? Uh, no, this doesn't handle uh, uh, FIC setting as such. It just brings a deterministic approach of handling how FIC needs to be done between auto and FIC. So the FIC values itself, uh, this... Uh, 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 this design doesn't handle it. Uh, it's out of, so, uh, out of the scope okay. of this design. Okay. If you need so, a different fake so value to support a lengthy cable or maybe uh, fine tune, mm -hmm. uh, have different support for auto negotiation, that's a different uh, feature altogether. But mm -hmm. what this feature tries to do is bring a deterministic uh, way in determining what the fake value will be when auto negotiation is enabled and fake is configured. Okay. Okay, so in, in that scenario, say for example, uh, uh, somebody has configured a particular fact value and also mm -hmm. has enabled auto neg as true. So in the in this scenario, uh, mm -hmm. uh, do you honor the fact configuration or? Uh, um, so sorry, it I was determines. A bit confused by that override supported. Uh, so 
yeah. it, de- mm-hmm. it depends on the override supporter if the vendor size supports the override supported field true and auto deg is set to one of none rfs or fc we will honor the user fake and if it is not supported we will set the fake mode and we will let the behavior of the vendor side to be uh, handle whatever it's that today uh okay so this uh, override supported is already an attribute there is it already yes. inside today okay it's already a part of site yeah yeah but in, in what cases we may need those mode number 4 when autonet is true and uh, override true um autonet is true and override true we need the fec mode we will need to set the fec mode so out. yeah for For example, I think in the auto negotiation, the fake is auto negotiated, right? So, mm-hmm. however, if people uh, want to enable auto negotiation because it's uh, you know doing other part service tuning, uh, other things in the auto negotiation, right? So they want to do that, but they cannot support the fake, right? So they they you know somehow they they want to do this uh, fake override. So Gohan, to clarify, do you? So I think the question is when you have autonet uh, override supported and autonet enabled, and you do not set any fake settings, fake is already auto negotiated. Why do you need a mode override? Uh, this is primarily because oh, one thing is uh, previously, as I said, uh, uh, in Sonic we do not have the uh, uh, concept of unsetting the attributes. Let's assume the user has first set the attribute to RS. and now decides to do an auto negotiated fake now how to go back to auto negotiated fake there is no answer so you need a way and also this is much more deterministic to enable the auto negotiated fake uh, in this scenario what uh, we have right uh, for example uh, there is auto neg override right supported false and auto neg is true and there is nothing set which means no fake attribute is set and we are not uh inserting the auto neg to kind of uh, also auto negotiate the fake it's up left left up to the vendor uh, implementation to do it but when sonic uh, sets the auto and this is supported it means you are forcing the auto deck to also uh, negotiate the fake that's the, the key difference here and that's why you need the mode auto to be present in the cli uh, actually meant uh, item number 4 Mm-hmm. So do you mean that we auto negotiate speed but still force fake mm-hmm. uh, as user define? Yeah, that's true. Okay. So, I mean, in that case, if you really want to auto negotiate to auto negotiate your fake, you should set the auto neg to true and the fake to auto, right? So in that case, that's correct. Uh, uh, yeah, that's correct. and sudarshan you are also saying that uh, the transition from 4 to 5 and 5 to 4 is possible yes that's correct and that that results in uh, unsetting and resetting the fact mode right yes so user can uh, move easily from uh, user forced fact to auto etc using the cli commands easily without if you don't have the auto mode there is no way it's possible But that one, I have a question. You know, does it really? You know, uh, let's say you know, if you did override, and then once you change it to auto, mm-hmm. uh, does it really need to re-trigger auto negotiation, or you know, you don't have to, but uh, you will change to the negotiated effect? Because uh, that part, I'm not quite sure. Um, change it, would it automatically change to the? you know negotiated fake or will so it depends trigger, you know, it depends on the yeah uh, this brings to uh, the implementation details of the auto negotiation itself uh, one thing is user can have the auto negotiation enable like the vendor side can kind of have the auto negotiation uh, in place uh, negotiate the fake etc but do not program the fake the second thing is disable the fake auto negotiation itself and later enable it when the mode is set to auto and then negotiate the fake which are uh, two different uh, uh, approaches but at the end of two do both approaches you will have the fake in place does it make clear
Mm, yeah, I mean, uh, excuse me, it will test so it out. So it, it goes pretty much into the behavioral model of Psi. So I don't think we have defined that. We define the end behavior, but how it achieves, it's not something uh, defined. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, let me continue uh, further. Uh, we have, uh, we do not introduce any new CLI, but for the existing config uh, interface fic, we have an additional mode called auto. So the CLI will uh, list a new mode auto. And uh, in the show command, uh, what we do is, uh, we do not have a separate show for fic. We just have show interface as a status which displays the fic. Now, since we have the mode auto, uh, and also we have an uh, uh, attribute to fetch the effect, what we will be doing is we will be after the link link is up, just like we do for the uh, upper speed, we also fetch the upper fic and then publish it in the state DB. So when the uh, mode is set to auto and uh, during the show interface status, we will also query the uh, state DB apart from config DB and display it as uh, the actual operational mode versus what is configured this way. So the user will know what is the actual mode that is uh, uh, negotiated. Yang model changes, we introduce a new, uh, just an additional uh, mode for auto. Uh, restrictions, limitations. Uh, so this is where uh, 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 the vendors need to be a little uh, careful. So previously it was undefined and let, let to the vendor itself. So what happens is if the vendor uh, previously has given precedence for auto negotiated fic over the user fic, with this change, it means user fic will uh, get precedence. Uh, so migration might have a problem. So in this case, what the vendor can do is they can uh, have a DB migrator and migrate whatever uh, it's there in the platform uh, from RS or FC or whatever it is. When auto neg is configured, change it to auto because previously their behavior was auto negotiated with getting precedence over the user fit. In other case where the vendor has uh, the other way, the vendor need not do anything. The vendor need not have any uh, changes, they can uh, just implement the auto fake and uh, the backward compatibility should exist as such. So basically, if the previous implementation has user configured fake mode, the, the update is not an issue. Yes, if the user precedence uh, configured fake mode as precedent, that's not an issue. Correct. So for test cases, we do cover these test cases in the VS. Uh, we have a, a query uh, to support, uh, to check if the query is set to true and uh, see if uh, FIC is configured, whether uh, this uh, corresponding uh, override is also set. And we will have two approaches, one with the, the autonic query supported and one with the autonic uh, override mode not supported and ensure in both the scenarios, uh, uh, the corresponding settings are. Yeah, so listen, uh, this is Madhu. So let's say, um, let's say I'm dealing with a multi vendor and uh, mm -hmm. one vendor supports it and other one not support it. How do I know, like, you know, what kind of configuration should you use? Whether should I go with auto or should I go with uh, uh, what kind of mode? So do we so have any you... show capabilities? Uh, that's a good question. We do not have show capabilities, but for a vendor who doesn't support the auto mode, if they configure right. auto via CLI, it will be blocked. It will throw that the vendor doesn't support, uh, okay. mm -hmm. support the auto of configuration. Yeah. So basically when you do an automate, right, automating multi-vendor switches uh, mm -hmm. via config DB, uh, mm -hmm. is there a way, uh, to how to avoid this kind of misconfigurations? Uh, I don't think such, uh, such uh, we introduce such a mode, and uh, the same is true for other uh, uh, settings as well. Okay, today, right. today mm -hmm. we, what we will do is, if auto is configured and it is not supported, we will log error uh, in mm, the right. yeah, syslog. CL, also. syslog. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we follow the same approach, and an additional we will have a check in the CLI. So, is there a possibility? Uh, uh, yeah, I understand that. While CLI itself, you are throwing uh, mm -hmm. an error uh, based on the capabilities, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So can you, I mean, do we have any, uh, uh, can you add that uh, into the HLD so that like, you know, we'll be careful when you handle it with multiple vendors? Sure, I can add it. I can also add the error log here saying what what will happen if auto is configured through config DB. I can Thank update you. So Thank that's you. an, are we getting that uh, SI capabilities to know, I mean, are we storing it somewhere and then validating yeah, it, against that uh, thing for the- Yeah, we will uh, be storing, it will be stored in the port search uh, cache. Okay, so, so from the CLA perspective, it. it will be validated. So right mm -hmm. away, if, if the hardware does not support it, you will throw, uh, you will get that's error, correct. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, two uh, things, so uh, uh, Sudarshan. Um, mm -hmm. um, one, uh, this instead of cache, uh, writing it to the state DB is one. Uh, yeah, it's it's and, actually uh, what I meant is we will first store it in the cache and then update the state DB. So today, what we have is. We, uh, in fact, even today we have a check where we query the state DB for the supported fake modes. And then we, uh, if there is unsupported fake modes, we throw error. So we are going to extend it with, with the auto. We will support if this attribute is supported and our auto to it in the org agent. So that will be taken. Okay. Uh, can the auto negotiation fail, Sudarshan? Uh... Auto negotiation fail, of course, can happen, but uh, that's not in the scope of uh, uh, this HLD. Okay. No, I, I'm just wondering your first case, right, uh, where you were saying it will be non-deterministic. So if mm -hmm. auto neg fails, if it can fall back to any of the configured one. Uh, so this is help? the behavior today, and the user has decided not to support it. I don't think uh, there is much can Sonic can do. This is whatever happens today and user wants to retain the behavior as such. So we are not going to uh, disrupt the behavior. If they have some kind of uh, internal handling, it will be in place uh, for the backward compatibility. Okay. So what, you... what, what I'm thinking is if Autoneg is enabled and effect mode is also configured, in mm -hmm. case of, uh, uh, so in that part, you called it as non-deterministic, right? So instead, if AutoNeg is enabled and if it mm -hmm. fails, then mm -hmm. we can fall back to the configured fic. So we don't have a support in SAI to understand if AutoNeg is failed or not today. Okay. Hey, um, this is about DB migrator. You mentioned about uh, mm -hmm. while upgrading, you need to do this. Can the DB migrator also part of this implementation? So it that, is platform because specific. Because that is going to be right? gender, that's going to, I mean, even it is platform specific. I, but can, add, I can add a function where they can yeah. use it for a platform. But the problem is when I add a function and it is not used anywhere, it becomes hard to uh, justify having a dead code, right? Um, so it is, it's, it's it is not useful. It is not useful only when uh, this uh, uh, SAI capability is not there. Right. No, no, right. no. Uh. DB migrator uh, will be used when the current user behavior vendor supports like auto negotiated effect is taking precedence over the user. And I don't have data which vendors do support it and which vendors do not. So if I go and implement the DB migrator, it, uh, it becomes like a standalone function and will be considered as a dead code in future if no one is going to implement. But I have provided details how to uh, implement it. It should be a fairly simple task. If the vendor plans yeah, yeah. to support it, isn't uh, isn't it safe to assume that uh, you know? Um, I, I think when we introduce this SI attribute, the port uh, automatic effect mode override. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the default value is a false, right? That's correct. So isn't that implies that? Uh, you know, by definition, if you have auto negotiate enabled, then the mm -hmm. fake will be using auto negotiate the value. So what we will do is, uh, if the fake is not set, if the fake is not set, and uh, we are not setting any new uh, overhead values, it means whatever exists today will continue to exist, and we are also not uh, enforcing auto neg to negotiate fake, as I said. It is same as what uh, AutoNeg is true and fake is any. If this is a supporter and user configures one of the fake attributes, we will uh, for sure set this override equal to true. No, no, I get that, but isn't mm -hmm. that 
it's safe to assume that, uh, you know, uh, you can always migrate to auto? Uh, it's no, if the user, so the migration is required only in this scenario where the config DB contains both fake as well as authentic. If it doesn't contain it, no migration. Like both fic as well as uh, when RS is uh, like a uh, uh, fic is configured to one of the legacy values and also uh, auto negotiations enable. It, and the user has that auto negotiated uh, value to take the precedence in that previous behavior. Now they need to change one of their RS, FC, and uh, uh, none to auto to maintain the backward compatibility. Mm-hmm. Now, what is the backward compatibility again? I mean, maybe I... So, so uh, let's assume a vendor has a, a, a behavior where they, whenever FIC is configured and AutoNIC is enabled, yeah, uh, the auto negotiation is taking precedence for them, not the user FIC. They are ignoring the user FIC. This was their behavior until today. And they try to implement this uh, uh, feature and they migrate. Let's assume uh, they have a deployment where the user has configured FIC as RS and auto negotiation is turned on, but uh, underlying they ignore the FIC RS and they have the auto negotiation uh, take care of. It. So when they migrate to newer image, uh, what will happen is if they don't have the DB migrator, yeah, the user spec will take precedence because when RS is enabled and auto negotiation is enabled and also override is supported, it will force it the user spec. So in order to avoid the backward compatibility issue, what they can do in the DB migrator is they can uh, check if the auto negotiation is enabled and spec port is none RS or FC and they will take and change it to auto. So but, that, either, but isn't that they w we should always change it to auto when we migrate in the image? No, no, not. Let's assume there is a second uh, vendor who supports the user effect precedence over the auto negotiation, right? But that is not size spec. No, I size spec. The, the, the override mode is default is false, right? So meaning that we should not, uh, I mean, uh, so, you know, the default behavior is not to override the auto negotiation so this mode, is, right? This is actually not in relation with size spec, but the existing vendor attribute, vendor implementation of FEC versus uh, auto neg, how they behave, right? Uh, attribute, uh, auto, uh, this override is introduced only recently. Let's assume yeah, they yeah. have an image where they have both only FEC and auto neg attributes, correct? Uh -huh. uh, and their behavior is a, a much more left to the vendor implementation where vendor can determine whether user effect can take precedence or they can let the auto negotiation take their own effect. But uh, but I thought when we introduced that uh, this attribute, at mm -hmm. that point in time, we need to decide what is the default value, right? So you know, basically, I think the community agree that default value is false, meaning that... That's that uh, you know the, the, the that, 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 that the behavior of the vendor is not to override right so that's correct but the sonic behavior that we are introducing here is whenever there is a rs uh, none or fc we always override it that's the behavior we're introducing when the user sets the fic to one of the legacy modes he wants to override it yeah yeah no that i get it that i get it mm -hmm. right so therefore you know when you when you change from an image that does not support overwrite mm -hmm. to an image that you support overwrite, mm -hmm. then you should always uh, change the fact mode to auto. Uh, I don't think because, so. That that will work, okay. right? Let's 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 say this way. Let's assume a vendor exists where vendor has this uh, uh, override previously not supported, and vendor has the user fit take precedence over the auto negotiated thing. Okay? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That, yeah, when they're auto negotiated, no, 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 no. That, okay, so maybe, maybe my point is that, uh, you know, your index number one, the behavior is not, is not undeterministic. It is 
deterministic in a sense that the auto should win. Because by definition, when we introduce that psi override attribute, the default value is false. So the that got introduced only like some time back, right? There can be uh, implementations even prior to it. And when this is not supported, we cannot force the psi to uh, have take a default value. Let's assume this attribute is not supported by psi itself. We cannot assume that it should take a default value as false. When it is supported, I agree. But when it is not supported, you cannot uh, enforce it. Okay. So from the user perspective, to maintain the backward compatibility between the behaviors when they don't support it versus when they support it, they need the DB migrator to change only when previously their auto-negotiated fix is taking precedence over the user. They need to change the modes to from RSFC none to auto. Otherwise, I think uh, uh, the when uh, the user fix is always given precedence in the prior SI implementation. Uh -huh. That can continue. But okay, so but here, what what is happening is that uh, even though we introduce a DB, okay, so DB can be introduced. Can be meaning that, can, can, but we are not introducing that, right? So it, it's correct. it's a vendor that uh, that need need to be need to introduce that, right? So that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this may be a, so, so you are saying that currently we're not going to do anything in terms of mm -hmm. DB migrator. That's correct, yeah. Okay, in a general sense. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if, 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 if the user configuration have uh, this uh, FEC uh, setting mm -hmm. and auto negotiation both enabled, mm -hmm. then, you know, by default, uh, the behavior is they will change it to overriding mode. Yes, that's good. Uh, which is uh, user's configuration mm -hmm. will override, right? So yeah. Okay, that might be a little, that might be different from what they were expecting. That's correct. Uh, but again, uh, it's a vendor specific implementation and they need to be aware when they are implementing the mode. But don't we have an art of a enable disable kind of a uh, thing? Uh, so there's an instead of determining based on the uh, auto neg and fake, the final uh, setting that you want to set it to the mm -hmm. from the arc agent. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have some kind of a feature uh, art of a enable disable so that uh, if you want to have the new behavior, maybe that that feature is set, then you will basically. Based so that's on why. Those... That's why we have the uh, flag, right? Like uh, the auto mode itself is to kind of have the uh, auto negotiation take precedence, right? Uh, why do you need a feature? I don't this understand. This override true false is not a configuration option, right? That is basically- It's, not, it's, it's, it's in, in, indirectly determined based on the configuration. If, if I set to auto, it means override is set to false. When, when right. the user sets to auto, whatever the user, uh, let's assume we go by the way you say, and I have fake override some extra CLI, uh, the, it doesn't make sense for the user to additionally support a, a fake attribute. So that's why we have the uh, auto embedder as a part of the fake itself, as one of the fake settings itself. Okay, so here in this table, right, like, uh... mm -hmm. The current behavior is basically it's a vendor specific. It's what you are saying. If without this mm -hmm. uh, auto, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, yeah. Um, uh, is this applicable to external files as well? Uh, is there any setting on the file? Uh, today, I think external file, how I see it works is when we set a fic, the corresponding fic will be set on the same fic will be set on both the uh, line side and the uh, uh, file side mm -hmm. settings. Uh, it, it will be the same. If you are uh, setting, uh, if your uh, configuration results in override equal to false, you will also set override equal to false on both sides and same. 
so no additional work will be done for a separately for external file it will be how configuration is done today Uh, what about the mismatches between the phi and the mac i mean will there be a scenario uh, like that uh phi and the mac i am i don't see a scenario because we set But, the mac and then we set the phi and it applies for any other attributes today as well today we set it mm -hmm. in that way for the gearbox right i i yeah. i think i i don't remember the the, the gearbox uh You know whether the implementation is uh, complete or not, but I think this may be still uh, orthogonal to the gearbox, right? So you know, if mm -hmm. whatever we have discussed here, I think it should be applicable to the gearbox. But whether whether it's really the code is doing things for the gearbox, that part, I, I think, I, you know, that's correct. Yeah, I don't have the confidence, but uh, you know, but maybe that's a different subtopic, right? So I think for this mm -hmm. specific topic is. Uh, uh you know this effect mode uh i think the the it isn't the case the only thing that we have a potential migration problem is both is auto negotiation is true and we set effect mode that's correct and the user has a behavior where the auto negotiation uh takes precedence that's the only place where uh, uh, we need a we need a migrator otherwise this will be uh backward compatible as such mm -hmm. any other questions mm. uh, so on the topic of gearbox uh, you don't differentiate right now right not mm -hmm. agent you don't you don't differentiate yeah and and both these sci attributes are available in the community right sci sci yes Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Sudarshan, can you please add uh, the restrictions in the tabular form? It will be more clear. Uh, can you uh, repeat the question? Um, it's just a suggestion. Can you please add these restrictions in the tabular form? It will be more clear for the DB migrator. Okay. The last, the last. I want to update the where DB migrator is required in the table itself in this table, or you want to have a table here, new table here. Yes, yes, I okay, I, I I can add, I can add, I can add. Sure. Thank you. So for the DB migrator, I feel like a, a but so, sounds like uh, I mean, but okay, so. I think the challenge for me is that, um, you know, we 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 are striving to a you know a a, a single sonic image, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, at least all built from the same source code. But it mm -hmm. sounds like you are suggesting that for some platform, they need to have a different sonic image. Today we do have a. Platform based sonic image, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get that part, right? So, but so in I, that case, what what we may have to do in the future is, if you are planning to have a single sonic image in the runtime. No, no, no. Sure, 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 sure. I, I, I need to. I think. Uh, I, I mean, I, I need to explain that. I don't really mean that we'll have a single sonic image that can be run. You know, literally, the binary can be run any platform. I mean, say, I mean, building from the same source code. Right. Okay. So, mm -hmm. but somehow I feel like uh, at least uh, you know we should introduce that plugin, right? So then, then people can mm -hmm. enable or disable it uh, on their image, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. we we need to have, have the the the, um, the plugin available, and uh, people can say, "Hey, I want to." Uh, you know, for my for my image, I want to enable this or disable this. But do mm -hmm. do, do you plan to introduce that plugin? So that's what I said. If if the community is fine to have a code which is which may be a dead code, like no vendor may be interested in implementing, I'm fine to add it. It's a simple plugin. They can just have the platform check and call the plugin uh, for now. Or later, if we have a vendor who can uh, who wants this plugin, they can also implement it. 
so it's up to uh, you to decide because none of the vendors may require it and it may be a dead code sitting there oh okay so you are saying at least from your knowledge mm -hmm. this is only a hypothetical correct uh scenario and you you are not aware of it. at least you you know at least That's to correct. your best of your knowledge right so mm -hmm. this is not needed right so yeah if the plug is to change effect mode to auto meaning mm -hmm. that uh, currently some behavior is uh uh oh so you are currently the assume that without this plugin you are assuming that mm -hmm. uh the default behavior is the user's override auto negotiation yes okay Okay, because I, I, I thought most of the platform is the other way around. I mean, I, I don't have a statistic, but I feel like because, uh, you know, this attribute mm -hmm. is introduced, the uh, default value is the false, meaning at the time or point of the discussion of this attribute, most platform vendor or ASIC vendor feel that the default behavior is a false meaning you know usually when we when we determine the default behavior for that attribute is based mm -hmm. on the existing behavior yeah right? but again the the attributes default value means only if the attribute is supported if the vendor doesn't support it at all uh, it doesn't uh, have a default value mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, so you, you okay that's interesting i mean you it looks like yours okay so mm. okay uh that's all i have uh. So Darshan, when we have auto neg failing, right? Like auto fix uh, the negotiation, mm -hmm. do we send any yeah, syslog messages like what is the peer and what it's trying to negotiate with? So the Even auto negotiation is kind of uh, opaque to the Sonic. We just configure the settings and let the uh, vendors uh, lower layers kind of handle the negotiation. And if there is any failure, there is no kind of a callback mechanism or query mechanism that exists today, uh, I think. Uh, so it's up to yes. the vendor's implementation to error log or something. So Sonic doesn't have any such uh, support, even for other yeah. auto-negotiated fields today, right? We do a lot of fields that we negotiate today. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we have seen some instances where uh, like auto. That's correct. Uh, it, it's a yeah. topic for a different discussion. It's a good topic too, where we may need to uh, enhance the visibility to the user. But yeah, uh, maybe it's a, a future uh, different uh, feature as altogether. Agreed. Yeah. Okay, uh, if there are no questions, I'll uh, stop sharing. So, thanks, everyone. Uh, I'll share the link in the uh, chat and uh, please uh, comment on the PR. Thank you. Thank you, Sudarshan. Thank you, Andrew. thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.